And we're back with another episode of Stage Light Zero to 100, Effects Part 2. Okay, next let's go to the Electro Keys track where I've got Delay and Glitch 6. Let's pull it up. Our delay is pretty simple. It's a dual delay, which means it has two independent delay effects that you're running your audio through and can be operated in mono or stereo. Let's go and just kind of hit the link button and you'll notice your rates will stay in sync and your feedback will stay in sync. You also have a BPM sync if you want to like automatically sync the delay effects to your sequencer. I like having that on. Let's go ahead and set this. This is your rate for each side. So I have, I'm going to set this to eighth notes. You have a feedback knob which will control how long the delay goes on before it fades out. You also have independent filters on delays, meaning delay one could maybe have some mid-range frequencies echoing, while delay two could have more low or low mid frequencies echoing. You can also pan delay lines separately too. So if you're trying to create a really wide effect, maybe put like a mono guitar through this, set some different delay settings like eighth notes on one, quarter notes on the other, pan them left and right, you know, and you'll get this really cool wide effect. Let's hear what that sounds like. Pretty good. I'm going to turn that off now and we are going to go to one of the biggest plugins in Stage Light, Glitch 6. Let's go ahead and turn that on. You probably notice you don't hear it. Um, Glitch 6 is comprised of six of our effects, a lot of the ones I've already shown you here. The difference is, is we have a probability graph that basically turns the effects on or off in a uh, random fashion. It all starts with the repeat section. To uh, enable the probability graph, just use your mouse or finger and turn these up. If it's all the way up, it's going to automatically trigger repeat every time. If you turn it up a little bit of the ways, it may trigger it, it may not, creating a true kind of random effect. Besides triggering a repeater, you also have a couple of controls here of the uh, length of it. So this is going to repeat a 16th note. Maybe we want to set that to an eighth how many times it's going to repeat, and the decay of the repeat, measured in decibels. So turn it up, the repeats are going to be as loud as the signal coming in. Next, let's move down to pitch. The output of the repeat feeds into the pitch section. And you have your probability graph in the center like before. Before I even dial that in, let's look at some of these other options. I've got a pitch up amount, and that's done in semitones. I'll go ahead and set pitch up and down to octaves. And then you have ramp in percentage. This will basically make the pitch ramp up versus just jump up, for example. I'll go ahead and kind of leave this at around eh, 20, 30%. Now, let's add some pitch. Same with the probability graph here. If you turn all the way up or all the way down, it's guaranteed to pitch something all the way up or all the way down. If you put it in randomly, you're going to get these kind of random wobbly effects. And from there, you got to just play with it, adjust to it, and adjust it to your taste. Note that all of these are based on the sequencer, so when you play this back with the drums and everything else you got, it's going to create this extra kind of random glitchy effect, hence the name. More here, you can also reverse certain sections. Same thing, just come in here, play around, Mess with it till you like it. You also have a built-in gator. Now the cool thing about the gator is, besides just, besides just having it turn on and turn off, you can choose to assign it to the dry signal coming in or just the wet signal coming in. You have some simple controls to control the attack and release of the gate. So it can be extra open and, ha and be really smooth or you can make it extra choppy and uh, not to keep saying the word glitch, glitchy. Same thing with crush. Now crush affects everything in its path, the dry and the wet signal. Just go in here, you can turn the mix up or leave it halfway down and just go in and dial it in like so. The last effect is reverb and that does probably what you're guessing. 
Based on your probability graph settings, it'll insert reverb just on that splice of audio coming into it. You can adjust the size, width, and damping of the reverb just like you can in our plugin, which we'll be going over shortly. Last but not least, you have a master section. The master section feeds the whole signal through this filter that you can make as wide or as narrow as you want. You can also choose to turn down all the wet effects or all the dry effects and just have the full glitch signals coming through. A good use for that would be an automation, like maybe you put glitch six on your master bus and you kind of want your song to sound like it's falling apart digitally. Put that on here and then automate the wet and dry mix going all the way up, either here or here. Just a quick tip. Next, we're gonna move on to the reverb. Now, I don't have the reverb on an instrument track. I've got the reverb actually on a send track. Why do I have the reverb on a send track? Typically, with, if you think of reverb, it's a room or a hallway. And with, on a send track, you can use one reverb and you can send all of these different instruments to it. So they all sound like they're in the same room. Uh, let's take a listen to it. I'm gonna go ahead and use the keyboards again. And I'm already sending the reverb to it. And to get to it, I just go to the send track and turn on the reverb. Our reverb is very, very simple. You've got size control, which will make the room or hall sound bigger. You've got some dampening, which will kind of roll off the high frequencies and make the reflections damp. You've got width, so you can make the reverb you know, stereo or mono. And you also have a pre-delay, which will basically delay the reverb effect by up to 500 milliseconds if you want to get experimental. Last but not least, we've got some filtering. I typically like to take the low end out of my reverb. It makes the mix sound cleaner, sometimes on the high end too. Every song is different. You'll have to use it to taste. And if you're brand new, we always have presets that'll get you started off right. Now we're gonna move on to some effects I have on the master bus. I wanna go ahead and get all of these, all of the tracks rolling here. Select the master track, and as you can see, I've got a filter and a limiter on it. Let's take a look at the filter real quick. This is the same filter that is in the Ottawa, that is in all of our instruments. It's very simple. You have four different modes, low cut, high cut, notch, and bandpass. And you've got an XY pad to control your frequency and your cue. Cool thing to maybe automate based on whatever you want to do. And last but not least, we have a basic simple limiter. This allows you to pump up the whole volume of your mix without clipping. Just start applying gain and go. It is an effect you want to use sparingly, especially if you're putting it on a master bus. You don't want things to distort and get all crunchy, so take care when using the gain and the release. A faster release will typically lead to more distortion, so I, I like to keep it above you know, 10 milliseconds or so. And that wraps up our 0 to 100 series on stage light effects. We hope you guys have found this informative and helpful. If so, hit that like button. If you want to be first to hear when our next video comes out, make sure you're subscribed. There's a button down there for it. Thank you guys all once again for watching. We'll see you next time around. Later.